Hello dear friends, my name is Vitaly and today we have a first video about SAP HR module and time evaluation functionality. And this is an overview video, so we won't dive deep into the details, but I would like to introduce you general understanding how SAP time evaluation functionality works in HR and how it could be integrated with payroll. So, right now on the screen you can see so-called schema. Schema is an, is an uh, algorithm how the system processes all our data like work schedules, like attendances, absences, how the system analyzes all this data and then provides some sort of output like wage types for payroll or time types for uh, reporting. Let's take a, have a look, close look how it works. First of all, we would like to open transaction PA30 and find employee. So let's say we have an employee, number one. It's named by myself, like Vitaly Pucelov. Employee group one, employee subgroup U4. It's one of standard groups. And this specific employee is assigned to the United States. All we are interested in now is planned working time. So let's open it. We see that we have defined in type number 7 effective uh, 15th of May. We have some work schedule. So if you open it, you can see that uh, it's flexible. So we have uh, four days, then we have three days of actual work, work days, and four days uh, free. Let's open some work schedule. So we can see we have some time, we have a uh, work schedule class, so it's pretty defined. We are good with that and let's go back. Go back. What is important here? First of all, we need to have any work schedule defined, otherwise time evaluation won't work. Second, we need to define so-called time management status. Zero means we don't want to use time evaluation functionality and these uh, uh, time schemas, uh, which I sh have shown you before, it just won't start for this specific employee. If we have um, so-called time uh, attendances recorded daily, like time sheets, then we would like to use uh, status one. If we use uh, external devices, like sleep cards or biometric identification devices, then we would like to do integration through PDC time evaluation. PDC stands for Plant Data Collection of Time Evaluation. So it records ins and outs, all those punches, and then in time schema we can analyze how it would work and what wage types it would produce for payroll. Uh, and other thing is status 9. We actually don't use statuses, statuses 7 or 8 because they are rarely used. And most of all, we use status 9. It's so-called negative accounting when you have work skills in place and we just record only deviations like when employee is absent or employee works overtime. So for this specific case, uh, we have salaried employee and we would like to see how the time relation will analyze his data and then we'll try to add uh, additional attendance with overtime. So let's go back. We want to record attendance for this specific employee. I have done this previously. So we can see that there is one attendance. It's overtime hours paid. It's from 8 to 9. Let me show you. Pay attention that there is a previous day checkbox set. Because if you open work schedule for the 19th, sorry, for the 18th, because it's previous day. We can see that there is a work day starts at 7 p.m. and ends at 8 a.m. 
So when we put attendance and check this previous day checkbox, specified time, system will understand that this specific attendance should be analyzed in the previous day because we have a work shift which crosses the midnight point. Also, to record this attendance, we had to create so-called attendance quota. It's so-called so approval process. So if we want to create an overtime for some employee, first of all, we need to approve this. And to do this, we create attendance quota with the specified dates, like a period, and number of hours we actually allow this employee to work. We have done this and it shows that we have already used one time, one hour of overtime. And let's see how it works in time evaluation. So to run time evaluation, we go to transaction PT60. PT60. We choose employee number one and we have different time schemas. Right now, I want to say that we use time schema EM04. This specific international schema uh, uses works for uh, time management status is nine, so for the negative accounting employees. And we would like to run time evaluation only for a specific period of time, just to save our time for this course. It would be from 15th to let's say 19th of May. We don't want to run it productive. We don't want to save any data in the database and we would like to see the log file which would allow us to go through the schema and see how our data was processed. So let's run it. We can see that we had one employee number and it was successfully ran. So let's expand it. Here what we see. Let's say we take first day. Those blocks, they are coded into the algorithm. They are, some, they are predefined right now, but they actually could be changed. And as this is a typical schema, we can change this anytime we want. If we expand these three and find the first function P2000, what we can see here, it shows so-called input and output data. All our time schemas, they work like uh, algorithms where one line has some sort of function and this function performs some work, some useful work for us. There are a lot of functions, really a lot. And today we just want to go through general overview next videos we'll go deeper and I'll explain you the prompts, how those functions works and how we can change the behavior of the system to meet our requirements. In this case, this is a generic function and it reads the data from infotype number 7 for this specific calendar day. So we have uh, 15th, we have groupings, we have daily work schedule as free. So this actually is a day off. Class 0, day type 0, uh, holiday Class for today is zero. This is our um, personal work schedule for our period and it has zero hours. So it outputs two tables. One table is TIP. It's time internal processing table. Here we'll see a little bit further. System creates so-called time pairs. So it's a pair of time with a start and end points and some analytics, which allows us to analyze this specific time interval and then process it accordingly to our requirements. Table TZP just records the time points, which allows then to build this TIP table. I'll show you just in a second how it works. So we see that for this specific day, there is nothing actually happened. If we go to the manage time accounts and to the almost last function, combt, it accumulates balances. If you double click on that, we can see that there is again input and output. All tables are empty 
except this table TES. This table uh, stores the time types. It's some sort of containers which has their own uh, intention and we can analyze those time types. We can keep some data in the in those time types and then analyze them internally while we're running algorithm and time evaluation or we can build some reporting based on those uh, values and those time types. Each time type has code, description and number. Number usually means hours but we can actually use it uh, for different purposes like as a flag so if it has one it means yes, if it has zero it means no or we can store some values, not numbers, but uh, number of days, for example, or uh, current, current status, something we want in our specific situation. Tables uh, DZL, uh, DVS and, and all others, they are used for other purposes and I'll show you again just in a second. Let's take into account some day with data. So if we remember we had some data on 18th, let's double check that, May 18th, we have daily work schedule, we have some hours, 12 hours for this specific day. And it shows us that it started at 7 p.m. and ended as of 8 a.m. How do I understand it was ended at 8? 32 minus 24, it would be 8 a.m. after the midnight. So overall we have uh, 13 hours, we have those time points, and let's see how it goes further. What is interesting to us is this block, select time wage types. This is a key point of time relation and Right here, system analyzes all our time pairs. Let me show you. So what we have? We have from to, from to, from to time pairs. They have different columns. It's uh, that analytics I mentioned before. And they have different processing types like S, K, S, M. Different functions, different operations and different logic applies to those rows on every single step of our algorithm and each step provides some value like filling those fields, those fields, splitting those records into from one record into more records and it provides actually the key data for us which is processing types, time types and numbers. These time types then accumulates into different business logic time types and could be used for reporting. Those processing types and hours are used to generate wage types. Wage types are a key point uh, in integration between time relation and payroll functionality in SAP HCA. So when you have wage types generated in time relation, they are transferred to payroll module automatically and then payroll will pay this, those wage types or process them anyhow. So let's see what we have here. Here is example, one example how it works for our overtime. So system works through, uh, system goes through, through this table and there are four different rows. System applies to each row so-called wage type generation rules and every rule has its own logic. There are some fields uh, which are analyzed and if every single requirement is fulfilled with this specific role or this specific role, then system would generate a wage type accordingly to the settings we have in IMG. So in our case, system analyzes only processing type M. So it skips those three records and stops on the last one. Then it goes to the weekday. It shows that actually this is a fifth weekday. So it's Friday and it's uh, workable for our settings. 
because it allows us to have overtime on any day. Then it applies uh, calendar days, previous day, current day, next day, different classes like period work schedule class, like daily work schedule class, day type. And as we see on the right, all conditions are met. So we actually fine with that. And finally, system says that for this specific time pair and number one of hours, it would generate the wage type M805, overtime paid one. What does it mean for us? In the output, we have table ZML and we have one wage type with number of hours one. Then when we go down to the manage time accounts and function QBT, we can see that in table DZL, DZL means uh, daily wage types. So every single day when uh, time relation runs, it accumulates the wage types for this specific calendar day. And then it stores this data in ZL table. So you can see we have a date, we have wage type and number of hours. And this specific table ZL is read by payroll. As soon as we have wage types here, payroll would pay or process those wage types somehow. Again, it depends on how our functionality was set. We also have different other tables, like here <clears throat> we have table TES. It's again the time types with different values for this specific calendar day. So you can see we have one hour of break, we have 12 hour, hours of planned time and so forth. If we look at the output table, we can see that it's again like accumulated values for the whole month and it shows the calendar day of the month, time type and the number. So uh, saying simple, it just copies those values right here. Also we have one more table called Seldo where all the time types for a specific period, like a month, are uh, accumulated. And it would allow us to analyze how many hours the specific employee worked that month or how many hours he was absent. Or we can use any other time types predefined by the system or created by a functional consultant during time evaluation setup. And we can run reports based on table ZES, based on table SALDO, based on table ZL in SAP HCM in time relation info system. So this is general overview how time relation works. In the next videos, we'll start diving deep in all those small chunks of algorithms, how those functions works, why do we need to have this uh, A function, how can we read these absences and tendencies and how we can analyze them how this functionality works. Stay tuned, subscribe.